Listen to shoot the defense. It's unbelievable, Jeff. Welcome to Shoot the Defense on FNX. I'm your host, Stel, and we're back with another great guest. Now, midfield maestros, they're, they're gifted individuals who make the difficult things look easy. Players who dictate the tempo of games and entertain at the same time. Now, my guest fits that category like a glove. Now, I'm going to add more to this intro because the man deserves respect. My guest has played alongside greats of the game. I'm talking about... Danny Blint, uh, Edwin van der Sar, Sando Elise, the, the Nigerian, Johnny Method, Robin Richard Vichka, and the De Boer twins. Understand the levels of royalty this, on this list, ladies and gents. Now, these are some of my guest achievements, but I'm going to let you. T I'm going to let him tell you more. Sorry, Dean Horry, welcome to Shoot the Defense, sir. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. Hey, it's an absolute Thank pleasure. You. It's an absolute pleasure, Dean. And your, your journey from the beautiful capital of Suriname to the northeast of England has been truly remarkable. Now, how were you discovered by SVV? And am I right in saying you actually played under Dick Adverhout uh, there? That's correct. Yes, yes, correct. Uh, he's been, been my manager for three years. Wow. Uh, obviously, in my in my teens, uh, I was 18 when he uh, when I started working under him as a player. And I tell you what, he was a tough man to deal with. But I can imagine. I've heard some things. But about I him definitely time. needed it. <laughs> he <laughs> showed me. He showed me what you need to be a professional. All right. And so, so. And, uh, and 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 that's why I knew from from since I worked with him that it's not going to be an easy ride. And it wasn't. But it was uh, was nice to be in, involved in uh, in a seventeen year career. Well, I tell you what, you know, he's had some career as a player and the manager. I mean, you say that you needed that kick up the backside, so to speak. Were you? Yes. Uh, were you a bit naughty, Dean? I wasn't really naughty, I'd say. I was, I was, I was. But, but the thing is, you know, as a footballer, when you got technique, when you think you know it all, you need somebody to put you back in your place because football is not about how good you are on the ball. It's about the whole package, and the package is you need to perform week in, week out, and to be able to perform week in, week out, you need to train as hard as you play. So, you know, the training regime had to be spot on. Uh, he didn't give me an inch. Um, the, the, the way of life, uh, you have to make sure that you don't, you know, go out too much. Um, don't go partying and while you got games. Uh, and and he he made me aware of all these things. Make sure you eat well, prepare yourself, and every time he asks you a question, make sure you know the answer because he he was tough on you. You know, there's players out there, and there still is. If you ask him who you got next week, they don't even know. Mm. When Dick Advocaas asks you a question like who are you playing next week, what kind of team is it, what formation they play, you get, you make sure you know the, you know the <laughs> answers to it because he'll see, he'll tell you oh you're busy with other stuff. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> so very a very old school manager in the way. I mean, I, I kind of look at Richard yes. Meekles in that in that kind of uh, sense. So yeah, yeah, you need to you need to live your life as a footballer, not not live the life of a footballer. Exactly, live your life. Exactly. Well, they say a, a footballer's career could be a very short span. You know, sometimes you might get an injury and then that's it for the rest of your career. Even though you might play, yeah. yeah. So, so there you go. Yeah. But you, you were lucky yeah. enough to play for two of the biggest clubs in Netherlands between '92 yes. and '99, namely Feyenoord and Ajax, and you won the title and Dutch Cup with both. Both, clubs. yes, there with both go. teams I mean, and the cups as well. You must yeah. have some superb memories there, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was uh, it was kind of special because I am I'm from Rotterdam. I raised up in Rotterdam. Okay. Um, so when I when I joined Feyenoord when I was 20, 21, it was amazing to play for such a big club. In my in my first year, we won the league, and I scored some uh, important goals to win the league as well, which was amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, um, playing playing in European Cup one, which is the Champions League now, uh, with Feyenoord. Uh, in, in a young age, you know, playing against Barcelona, scoring against Barcelona at a young age, which is fantastic, of course, you know, nobody can take that away from you. Of course. Um, so, yeah, that, that was, uh, yeah, the, that was, it wasn't the beginning of my career. The beginning of my career was SVV, was his first division club, uh, where we got promotion with Big Africa. And obviously, then Feyenoord bought me, um, which is uh, a big achievement, of course. When you're Rotterdam, you want to play for Feyenoord. And, um, and and when I played for them, three years, I won one one cup and and two uh, no two cups and one 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 league title. 
Amazing. And Ajax? No, that, so after I find out, I went to FC Groningen. Groningen, that's right, yeah. Yeah, I played every game that, for two years. I didn't miss a game, which was pretty special as well. No injuries, like a full two seasons, never missed a game. Scored, was top scorer as well. Um, and then, I, then Louis van Gaal signed me four years, gave me a four-year deal at Ajax. Wow. Which was, of course, for me, like unbelievable achievement. Coming from Feyenoord, go a step back into um, like a mid-table team, Groningen, and uh, make the step up to Ajax. And then when you come to Ajax, you play with, you know, as you said, you know, the big places, Van der Sar, the Boo Brothers. And then, of course, also Michael Laudrup, who mm. was like, well, we, I played twice against him before that, against Real Madrid. And, um, but he was like, when, when, when with Feyenoord we played against Real Madrid, I played against him man for man, and he was like, unbelievable. So now I play with him at Ajax, which was great, you know. So in my first year, again, we won the double. Uh, I was top scorer in the top in the cup, uh, and 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 was the, the, these players to play with at Ajax was was just so nice and uh, you know a joy to play with. I so thought that Ajax team that won the Champions League with the likes of Cliver, you know all the the, the, the players like your Davids, your Seydorfs. I mean, <laughs> Van Hal. They were unbelievable. Yeah. They were unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. The thing is, when I when I, so that was in ninety seven, ninety mm. six. So I signed in '97, and um, all of those players had left I, by then, hadn't they? A lot of them had left by then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So everybody's gone. Yeah. So that was uh, a clear out. Yeah. It was like Winston Bogart, uh, Cliver, oh, David, Steedorf, all of them. They were gone, and they, 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 they had to build a new team. And that's in that year, I think they bought the most players they ever did. Mm. It was always the homegrown players. In that season, they had to get. They, I think. They got 10 new players in, like Benny McCarthy, Shota Avalazzi, um, and then obviously Oli Say, uh, Andrzej Rudy came from, from Germany. Uh, so they, they, I think 10 of us had to fit in. King Klatsi, remember King Klatsi, oh, Georgie King Klatsi? Of course, yeah. He yeah. Left, he didn't they bought him from Man City. That yeah, that's right, time. yeah, yeah. Because they got yeah. relegated to Division 2, I think, at the time when he left, wasn't it? Because, yeah. Yeah, so he's yeah. See, this is the thing. I mean, you you play for great clubs, and even when you know superb players like Sadov and them lot left, you still were playing alongside some pretty impressive footballers. You know, so oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mate, and mate. we had to build it up, and 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 still we won the double in that first year, Blimey. which was uh, amazing. You know, so uh, great memories, great, great yeah. memories. So yeah, so it was you know it was it was, it was absolutely you know uh, when when I think back. And obviously, when I talk to my kids and we show, sometimes we look go and go and see the videos on YouTube. It's uh, uh, it's a joy to watch, really. I, I can, <laughs> mate, I can imagine. This, this is yeah, unbelievable. And there was obviously the old stadium before Ajax moved to the uh, the new the Amsterdam Arena, which has now been changed. The to, arena. They've changed it to the Johan Cruyff Arena, haven't they? I think they announced it a couple. That's of correct. Hours. So yeah, it was, it was a Demir arena, Stadium, yeah. wasn't it beforehand? Yeah. Yep, yeah, that that's was a, correct. That was pretty yep. nice. Pretty, pretty nice traditional football ground. Um, yeah. yeah, so listen, I, I mean, I don't know how many players have, have moved to Huddersfield from Ajax, so you're the only one I can, off the top of my head I can think of. Now, how did that, <laughs> how, how did that move come about, and did it help having the likes of Clyde uh, Weinhard and Moncal there? Yeah, so yeah, it did. It did. It did. Because I was, um, uh, Jan Wouters was like, the, he took over as Morten Olsen uh, got sacked mm -hmm. and then Jan Wouters took over and Jan, Jan Wouters had different ideas of players bringing in so he got uh, Aaron Winter back from um, Inter? I Inter? think he was at, at Inter yeah he yeah. was at Inter so he got him back to Ajax and Aaron and me played on the same similar position um, and then he had another player from the academy he thought uh, he wanted to bring through so it left me um, stuck on the bench really and not even being involved. So, and now I'm a player, I want to play, you know. Uh, you, you can't get me a, a worse Dean Gore sitting on the bench, you know, <laughs> or, or not playing. So, um, and what happened is Steve Bruce was at Huddersfield and he, uh, he asked for me. Um, and I never heard of Huddersfield Town in my life. <laughs> so, so, so the person to ask is the person who played in England, which was Georgie Kinklatsen. Right. So okay. I said to Gio, I said, to, I said, listen, what what kind of club is Huddersfield? He said, well, 
they got a new, pretty new stadium. Um, Alfred McAlpine uh, Stadium, yeah. They play, yeah, yeah, they play in the Championship, you know. In a, in a, so it's it's not a bad thing if you go there because they 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 building a new team. So I said, okay, I'm I'm not going to sign for them, but I'm going to watch and see what what Huddersfield's got. So I went over. They they invited me to come over. I flew over and watched the game. Um, so obviously, when the game was there, Kenneth Monkow and Clyde Weinhardt were there already. Mm-hmm. And so I had a chat with them, and they said, Clyde came from Leeds, and he said, yeah, it's pretty decent, you know, we're building up a team. Steve Bruce obviously persuaded me to come over. And I'm like, I saw the game, and I was like, no, definitely not. <laughs> so um, I went back home, I said, no, I can't, I can't sign for this, uh, <laughs> this club, you know. Um, and, they, and Steve Bruce wanted, really wanted me, so he sold the club to me. He said, come over, we have a chat, and he, he invited me to his house in, in Hale. Um, he said, listen, you can live in Manchester, which is a nice city. Your missus will like it. You know, here in Bowdoin, in Hale, where I live, around the restaurants, out to Manchester. The airport is close by and it's not too far from Huddersfield. Right. Um, so after a week, came back, uh, showed me around and then, yeah, he sold it to me. He said, you know, we're going to go up. We're going to go buy more players and this and that. So I, I, I got persuaded and, um, I signed for them. They bought me, and I, uh, I, I jumped in, and I, I, I enjoyed it. I really, I really liked it a lot. We had a good team: Marcus Stewart up front, Clyde Weinhardt, our midfield Kenneth at the back. We, we had some good players at Huddersfield, and you know, from the minute I came, the fans liked me. Um, top of the league with Christmas, you know, beating Man City, beating everyone. So it was um, it was a good start. Absolutely, and you, you moved on to uh, Barnsley after that, and you formed a great partnership off the field with, with Bruce Dyer. Now, before I talk about Correct. Bruce Dyer and your relationship with him, yeah, you, you, you played for Van Hal and Dick Advocat in um, in Holland in the Netherlands, yes, and then you yes. moved over to play for Steve Bruce. And then Barnsley, yes. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but that season, didn't you have like three different managers at Barnsley? I'm, I, have I got that one wrong? Yeah. You had Spackman. Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You had, you had, yeah. Nigel, Nigel Spackman was the one who got me in. Yeah, and then Glenn Hodges and Steve Parkin. Now, when you've gone from yeah. two incredibly talented managers, someone up and coming like yeah. Steve Bruce, and then being hit hard with three different managers who yeah. were virtually inexperienced. How was that yeah. uh, from like a cultural perspective? Because the Dutch pride themselves on fantastic football and technical ability and everything yeah. else which embodies the, 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 you know, for the football world. And then you come across four managers that are completely different to what you're used to. How was that like? Yeah, that was very, very eye-opener uh, first. <laughs> Say the um, least. And everything really what I stand for and what I learned and what I, how I got brought up in football, I could throw that away in the mm. bin because I couldn't use anything of that. Because what's been asked for me to do was nothing to do with what I've learned in football, uh, unfortunately. Because if you look at the, the game, how it was, I mean, the championship is a lot better now. But in, when I was in there, the championship wasn't, wasn't great. It was like really like... Uh, you could say League One, League Two mm. is not great uh, when, when, when it comes to football wise. It's getting better as well. Everything is getting better, but it's a uh, you know it's a hustle bustle football. Yeah. You know, get it up there, second balls, channels, and um, you know the ones who who scored that goal wins. You know, and it's a fight the whole game. Mm. And I'm, I'm not brought up like that, so it it was it was it was difficult. It was difficult, especially when when managers ask you to do things. You know, one of the managers asked me to, he, he, after he came, he came like, he came like, uh, he said to me, uh, you know why I don't play you? Because you don't win enough headers in midfield. <laughs> I can't help. <laughs> I, and I thought, I never, I never won a header in my life, but I played Champions League. <laughs> you know, is that maybe not enough? You know, <laughs> I scored against Barcelona, I scored against Real Madrid. Oh, Can I not play against uh, Rotherham? <laughs> You know, in midfield, and only I'm not playing because I didn't win. I don't win midfielders in, 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 in midfield. You know, so that sort of things. You know, it's like uh, it's like wow. Uh, you, when you tell somebody he doesn't believe you in Holland, why I, you know, made the step to uh, the championship really uh, in 
in that sort of football. Mm. But, uh, so, but, again, you've got but it, stories, it happens, right? and it's a it's a learning curve. But you know what? I wouldn't change it for for anything because as much as you don't like the style of football, sometimes it, it's it's fascinating how much fun it is. You know how much people for how much fun they have watching it. Mm. Oh, of course, from it's, the it's the because there's always something happening. It's, it's spectacular. That's right. That's right. Now, I understand you lived in um, Bruce Star's spare room as your family were in Cheshire. What, what was that like? <laughs> That's correct. Yeah, because obviously my my wife would never go to uh, live in Barnsley <laughs> with me. Uh, with all respect for Barnsley, but she is somebody that needs to be in the. In a, in a big city mm-hmm. so obviously coming from 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 Amsterdam um, she wouldn't want to go in a, you know follow me around and and go in, in into a small place so she wanted to have some vibrant which is Manchester and but 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 Bruce Dyer he lived in Barnsley so yeah every time I had the chance I stay up with him and he ha- I had a room there but one of the things, the reason why I stayed in his room, because his wife is a fantastic cook. <laughs> if she cooks for you, I mean, you don't want to go home. <laughs> so, <laughs> she, she's got to be a chef one day, mm. because she can cook. What and, was your favorite uh, yeah. meal? No, when, when she just like uh, the, the, the Jamaican style dishes, right. what she makes, it doesn't matter what she makes, and she makes it nice. You Excellent. Know? Excellent. She makes a nice fish soup, or uh, she makes nice chicken soup, and she makes nice curry goat, whatever. You know, she's good. And 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 I jo- enjoy that. I was like, ah, oh, see you later. I, I might stay up this uh, today and and tomorrow and the day after. <laughs> and it was good fun because me and me and Bruce are we 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 were like good friends, and we still are. You know. That's brilliant. It's great. That's so it's a great time. That's absolutely brilliant. Well, Ordine, I mean, I, I deliberately left out a few facts in the intro. Um, you have your yeah. coaching badges and, and spent time at Southampton coaching the likes of Lalana and Jack Cork. And you also coached at Ajax alongside Johan Cruyff. I, I've got so cool. many questions. Obviously, there's so little time. I, I'm going to ask you a two-part cool. open question, though. What yes. were those experiences like and how much did you learn? To work with Johan? Yeah, both at Southampton as well because they, they've got an incredible academy, don't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, that was a different style of, uh, of that was first team. Hmm. Um, but um, yeah, let's start with Southampton because I was there first. Southampton was was like experience because we had like young players like Lalana coming through. Uh, Jack Cork was there. Uh, Andrew Sermon. You know, we had like good, good young players who were like, you know, loving the game. And Lalana was on a, a different level to anyone else uh, in the in the team. In my opinion, mm-hmm. and and to work with him every day as a youngster uh, playing the championship was wonderful. And, and and the coaching you do with them, it's you know the, the better players you can coach, the more fun it is. Yeah, because every session you do, it's like the intensity, the quality, everything makes you know makes 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 the football and and the coaching nicer. You know, everything you tell him, he picks up quick. He wants to learn. He wants to do extras. So yeah, we done a lot of extras as well. You know, and he, he used to love doing them, and that was a great experience. You know, uh, unfortunately, it wasn't long enough; it was only six months, but uh, it was it was good fun. It was good fun. And and when I went to Ajax, mm-hmm. um, obviously that was quite special because it was um, Dennis Bergkamp and um, um, Brian Roy. They phoned me. And asked me if I wanted to come and oh, wow. start start this revolution with uh, Johan Cruyff, um, and they they wanted to take Ajax back to where they belong. Ajax came went to a spell where they didn't create any top players anymore. It was like, you know, players were young players were leaving the club and going to PSV and Feyenoord and mm, mm. uh, different clubs while I, if, if somebody comes you want to play for Ajax it was a no brainer yeah. and at the time it was like you know players were doubting Ajax and Johan said we have to take that back that you know that we are the best so I got the phone call and if I want to do the under 18s which I did and Johan is a special kind of guy 
unbelievable. Uh, he he's uh, you can you can sit and listen to him uh, the whole day because the way he talks about football is a football man. The way he talks about football is is so simple and so beautiful and uh, and 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 that's why I can see Pep Guardiola is like Johan. He doesn't give a toss who you are, where you are, as long as you believe in something, you make sure you do it. And I've been fighting for Pep Guardiola last year, every game he played. Every time there was a discussion. He's arrogant, he can play that football in this league. Uh, who does he think he is? All these things they said about Pep, and I was constantly defending him. He doesn't have his players yet. What, one, what, wait till he get his players, he'll do what he's got to do. He believes in what he, do, what he, what he does, and, he, and, and not only believes in it, he keeps to it. He doesn't, he's not going to change it. Mm. His goalkeeper is just a center defender. He's just a player. And that's what Johan said from the beginning. When he started coaching at Ajax, he started with the goalkeeper being an outfield player. And, wow. and, and, and that's what Pep is doing. Pep, Pep his, because I spoke to um, the people at Man City as well, Pep, his whole uh, football is changed by Johan Cruyff. And, and, and I, I can understand why, because the way he spoke to us as coaches, because don't forget, he got, he got, he got like 10 of us in. He got like uh, Burkamp, De Boer, um, uh, Wim Jonk, uh, Jaap Stam, Overmars, uh, Brian Roy. He got all 10 of us in to run the academy for him. Mm. And he said, nobody's the boss. Obviously, there need to be a boss on the, on, 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 the, on the paper, but everybody got to work with each other. And we, with each other, we had to make a new IS Bible, yeah. and which we did. And which we did, and I was involved with that. And we, we, we made it uh, like the ultimate Ajax players on every position. What do the, How do we need to create them? And we made that Bible and start creating again. Um, from the beginning, you know, as you know, we do academy is a ten year. Uh, after ten years, you can see the results really. Yeah. And and you know, it was it was a joy to work. I mean, imagine you're a a, a ten year old boy and you work with people like Dennis Burke come in training. Mm -hmm. You know, Yap Yap Stam Overmars. You know, that sort of people are coaching you. That, that's that's what you would want as a as a young player, and that 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 what happened. You know, you don't individual coaching on positions with players who've done everything in football on their position and then you get coached by them every day which is great and that's what I well, that would made IS great again yeah I mean I think there's a, a fallout between was it Overmars and Burkham I think Burkham has left uh, Ajax yeah. hasn't he correct. Um, correct but the thing is when you when you look at the I mean, I've done I've done the tour of the the arena uh, twice actually yeah. um, and when you yeah. look at their structure they've got a youth academy that I think was it is it Thir uh, tw sorry, 10 youth academies or something but between the ages of 7 to 13 or something like that 13 youth teams yeah. sorry 13 yeah. youth teams yeah. and, and yeah. they start at 7 years old and they're so, they're so encouraged to play football I mean I know all about the, uh, the tips model um, yes. And you know, yeah. obviously, four three three is is their central yeah. style of play, so to speak. But then, when yeah. you, even when you go to the ground and you look outside, there's a little pitch for kids to kick a ball about. So football yeah. is constantly encouraged, and they're actually encouraged to play with without any uh, without without being tied up, so to speak. There's no um, how can I put it? They're not restricted as to what they can and can't do. They're just given the ball. And say right, play, yeah. just play, because. Yeah. You know that that is effectively how kids learn. It's it's a street style, yep. um, and you yep. mentioned Guardiola being heavily heavily influenced by by Johan Cruyff. I, I know Cruyff yep. had a massive influence at La Masia. Um, and yep. I guess that's where yep. where uh, heavy exactly. Yep. There you go. There you go. So yep. I mean, you can see the yep. the similarities, mate. But it's it's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's why I wanted to say because I, you know, when, when I see Pep now and everybody's talking different now. Uh, well, forget about yesterday mm -hmm. against Liverpool. But um, if you see now what he did and what he does, it's just incredible. The way he he, he plays, you think, is he crazy to to, to 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 let the goalkeeper place one twos and little triangles in his own eighteen yard box? Mm -hmm. That's Johan all day long. You know, 
what other manager would like to, his goalkeeper to do little triangles in his 18-yard box? Well, it, I don't it, think. it wasn't the Colombian manager of the 1990 World Cup with Rene Higuita running out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But I mean, be honest, who would do that? Well, I, I don't I, think no one I, would have the balls to do that. You're, you're probably right. You're probably you know? right, and I guess that's what makes his his style of play much more effective and and much different to yeah. what uh, what we're used to. Um, yeah, you know, but and it's beautiful to watch. It's beautiful. I find it beautiful to watch. But the they, 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 they dominate dominate possession and win games. And like they're that. dominating games as well. I mean, I said, apart from yeah. last night, but they're dominating games. If you look at the Premier League, I mean, it's practically done and dusted now. You know, so yeah, 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 and, yeah. In and, and then they play the same away as home. Yeah, yeah. You think who plays? Who plays? If they play Man United, it's like who plays home and who plays away. Exactly. Like Man City always plays at home. Exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. Except for yesterday. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, well, stranger <laughs> things have happened in football. You never know what might happen in the second leg. But yeah. Yeah. Well, look. Um, true. If you if you look at the uh, the Scottish and Dutch national teams, they have a couple of things in common. Neither have qualified for the World Cup, and they're they're in transition now. Both have quality youngsters breaking through, but they obviously need time to develop. Now, you know yeah. a lot about both youth setups. I mean, how much work needs yeah. to be done to get them at a respectable level again? That's a hard question to uh, to answer. Um, you know, I've got my ideas, of course. Um, one to start with the Dutch uh, kids. Mm -hmm. um, the, 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 where, where we have a problem now is that our players go too young abroad. Right. So when they come um, 15, 16, let's say our best talents in Holland leave when they're 15, 16. Effect. They go to Chelsea, Man United, Man City, Liverpool, wherever takes them. So when they go to these clubs, that means they miss a very, very important time of their uh, development um, where they could play in a first team football and they play like on the 18s or even on the 23s. Mm -hmm. Where they would play a first team in Holland. And first team football is where you learn the most of your game. There's still players... Uh, even with my own son I can see it he hasn't got a lot of first team experience but he's, he's already 23 mm -hmm. um, and, and he's a very good player but still playing 23 football and it's very difficult to play Premier League when you're in the Premier League club mm -hmm. to play the first team when, when, a, when a player is young and he, and, and he played for and, and he would have played in Holland he would have had maybe 200 games in his, under his belt uh, while, while he's only 21. Right. So that will make a different player. So when he's there, 21, 22, then he goes abroad, then it's still okay. Because then he's a different player. But when he starts um, in the England setup and he won't get first team games, uh, everything is later. So you don't develop to the top player what you would have been developed if you were in Holland. Right. Because you needed that important time. You know, so... So that, that's one of the biggest reasons, in my idea, that, that why uh, we, are still, we still have good players, but I'm talking about the top, top, top players. Because yeah. every top player in Holland have their career first in Holland on the top and then make the step at maybe 24, 25 years old to, um, to a big company, in, uh, a, big, big, a big club in, in Europe. I, I, I fully agree with you. That's fully it. agree with you. Yeah, and now all, all the rest is already gone when they're 15, 16. Mm. So, so what do you make of Ronald Koeman's chance of turning things around? Because look, I mean, you've mentioned in the past, in fact, sorry, earlier on in the show about players that, you know, need to become footballers before they're worried about their celebrity status. And I'm talking about Memphis Depay yeah. here, who's a very, very yeah. talented footballer, but he just yeah. seems that, I don't know, maybe his head isn't screwed on from a, from a playing perspective. I mean, we've seen it time and time again with, with talented footballers not making it yeah. to the levels that they should. I mean, look at Revo Morrison, for crying out loud. Absolutely fantastic oh, talent. He's the best in the world, yeah. He's, he's incredible, but now he's, he's playing in, in Mexico. You know, Mexico, so yeah. what, what is going on with the Dutch national team? Because I've heard stories about, you know, very similar to the FA, where it's kind of like an old boys club, and once the powers that be at the Dutch uh, Federation go, things might change. Um, do the problems so. stem from the top or are we talking about more of a fundamental thing like you said before about youngsters not playing in the Dutch league or the Eredivisie and then just going off elsewhere first 
I think I think it's the quality. Right. It's the quality of the players. Um, as I said, the quality you, you get you get the quality in in in, in players from their development mm -hmm. from and where they where they're going to end up to. Um, the qu the quality and the talent is there, but when you talk about the players that make the difference, so we always had players that made the difference on the highest levels in the world, always. Uh, and and international football, you need players in your team that make the difference. Uh, they have to be world class, and players who were made, who were world class. The last one we had was Ian Robin, right? And maybe you, maybe Robin van Persie, Wesley Snyder. Yeah, these were the top top uh, world class players. Yeah, and in the, there's a lot of names I can call out for you uh, before that. Mm -hmm. But now in this national team, the world class players who, who can make the difference, we have to, we haven't got them. Mm -hmm. We haven't got them. You can say, okay, Van Dijk, he's a world-class defender. Yes, he, he, he's 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 a very good uh, Fergie Van Dijk at Liverpool. Mm -hmm. But if you if you look at the players who have to make the difference, like your Marco van Basten, Ruth Hurlitt, uh your your Seed or your um, Patrick Kluivert, who's going to make the difference? It should be Memphis Depay. Yeah. That's one of the players that should be. Uh, the Iron Robin for the national team, mm -hmm. but unfortunately, um, he's not on that level. So that 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 is now um, uh, now the discussion is who's going to take that role of being the superstar for Holland for the Dutch national team, because you need superstars to uh, to come to the level uh, of the world stars. That's right. I mean, there's players such as you know Justin Cliver, who obviously his, his dad yep. was a remarkable yep. footballer, but he's yep. 18 years old. He's he's going to yep. need time, isn't he? Um, yep. I, don't let don't let him go too quick. He's he's still got a few years at Ajax to get you know get him to the right level, and then he will be world class, hopefully. Exactly. And then you got the likes of yep. like Timothy Fosu Mensah at United, who's done extremely well at Crystal Palace. He's a, he's a yep. he's a phenomenal talent, I think. And then. Obviously, the riot yeah. at um, Lazio, and we weren't talking about the, the two million pound that kind of went to some fraudsters. I don't know if you know about that story, um, but that's, no. that's that's another. Yeah, but some some fraudsters emailed Lazio saying they still owe them oh final two million pound, and Lazio actually sent that money over to them, thinking that it was oh, final. Yeah? yeah, yeah, yeah. Even, <laughs> even the best get dupes. Anyway, um, but yeah, you're, you're right. You know, I mean, look. Before yeah. in the past. It's, it's, it, when it comes to that level, you need to look at the superstars. Yeah. You know, Gareth Bale does it for Wales. You know, everything is, you know, the, 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 don't, don't take anything away from the players who play with him, but one is going to make the difference. That's just him. Yeah. Yeah, that's you right. Know, make that's the difference. Right. At, at, at Holland, in Holland, the Dutch national team at the oh. moment, we haven't got that superstar. Mm hmm. No, and I, we should have we should have maybe two or three. No, I agree. And even even the under twenty ones is made up of, of Ajax, PSV, and RZ Atmar players. So yeah, you know yeah. But you know, yeah. speaking of the Dutch national team, I don't mean to take up too much of your time. But um, when when you look at their achievements at international level, um, you know they got to what, three World Cup finals, losing all three, and then winning the European Championships in nineteen eighty eight. Um, yeah. I cannot for the life of me. Put my finger on why they haven't won more at international level. Is, is, have they just been unlucky, or have they just come across teams that are just better than them? No, I think it's also to do also a bit unlucky. Um, and on the other hand, well, Spain, you know, in the final was maybe it was better than than Holland. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Spain deserved it, you know. Um, we had the chance to win it, you know, with Iron Robin. If uh, in South Africa, but Spain was just fantastic. They had just uh, uh, they, they were they, they deserved to, to to win the final. So yeah, I, I, I don't know. It's a difficult one to to say. You know, it's um, there's so many big nations and, and good football teams. And Holland, yeah, it's unfortunate we never won one. Mm. Very very unfortunate. Absolutely. Well, on the final note, mate. Talk to me about True Socks. I mean, I hear people like Luis Suarez, Gareth Bale, Falcao, and even Alexis Sanchez are using the product. What What yeah. is it about True Socks? Tell me. Well, True Socks is something else. You know, that is like the owner, 
the, the creator of True Socks is uh, a good friend of mine who, uh, who moved from, from America to, to England. And he is, uh, he just, for his own benefit, he, he, because he didn't like movement in his shoe, like every one of us. Yeah, yeah. That's why we take, you know, small shoes to, to make sure we don't have movement in our shoe. Mm -hmm. And then we get blue toenails and stuff like that, which is terrible. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, you, you always take a size or a half a size smaller than the, than what you normally have. And, and he actually, what he did, he, he's, I put glue and double sided tape in my shoes. That's what I've done when I was playing. And, and he actually came one day and he said to me, I've got this, this and the other, and, and I've got this product, which has got, you know, stop the movement in your foot. And I said, what is it? And he said, I've got anti-slip material inside and outside the sock. So okay. that means when you're outside the sock, the sock is against the shoe. And inside, your foot is stuck against the sock. So there's actually no movement anymore mm -hmm. because everything, everything sticks. Right, okay. And, and it, it actually works because the material works in wet and dry conditions the same. Actually, when it's a bit wet, it works even better. So when he told me that, I said, I want to try it, because if you, <laughs> if you got that, then it's like unbelievable. So I tried it, and it was like something I, I missed in my career. <laughs> uh, and he was actually clever. He patented it. Um, so he's actually the only one in the world who can use anti-slip material in and outside the sock. Oh, yeah. Everybody can use inside the sock. Everybody can use outside the sock. But nobody can do in and out. That's his patent. Wow, okay. Interesting. So when he came to England, he he, uh, he, he rented a house. Actually, uh, still now uh, across the road from me. So we live in the same street. Um, and I start working for him as a consultant. Uh, start giving the socks to uh, the whole Dutch national team and the Brazilian national team and all the top players in the in in the world. So in the first year we made so from you know only two three players wearing the socks. We had like 80 players in the World Cup in Brazil. Like no more, 98 or something, 98 players wearing the socks. And we were in Brazil just giving the socks to all the players. And, and, and up to last year, so I worked four years for him now. And last year, or a year and a half, nearly two years ago, he, he got an offer from Nike for 40 million wow. to sell, to sell the company. <laughs> and he, and he turned it down. Well, if Nike are offering 40, then it's probably worth triple that. Yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, he turned it down, and um, so um, we're still working. <laughs> I'm still working for him, and you know everybody still wears the socks. We never paid anyone uh, to wear the socks, and everybody loves it because this is actually a product that really works. It's not a gimmick. It's no marketing tool. It's a real thing that works with any sport. What you do, it works because any movement in your sock. Uh, Every slippage creates all, all sorts of problems, mm. and this makes that that you know it doesn't matter what what size boot you wear, even if you wear two sizes bigger, you you don't move in your shoe, you know, and that's uh, something special, really. Brilliant stuff. Well, Dean, look, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show, mate. Thank you very much for your time. It'll be great to have you back on no sometime problem. soon. Um, you're on yeah, Twitter. no problem, anytime. You're on Twitter, aren't you? At Dean God. Yes, I am. That's right. Yeah, that's right. And uh, yeah, thank you for, so much for your time. Um, are you going to get back into coaching sometime soon, or are you going to carry on? I coach it? every day. Okay. Every day. Okay. I've got a team here. I coach uh, Edgerton. Um, uh, I, st I start doing it with Jim from True Socks. Okay. Uh, we we training. Me and him we're training every day just to keep ourselves fit. And Emil Heskey, Jaylen Samuel, uh, and Nathan Ellington, uh, Danny Weber. We had so many players come and join us in training. Oh wow. That we uh, eventually, uh, also young players, players that got out of, uh, didn't get a scholarship or a pro, they come and train with me. Like Also like with Val Morrison, when he's in the country, he trains with me. Wow. Uh, my, my own son trains with me. It's like, we got like 30, 40 players that come and train. And what happened is we, um, they asked me to take over the team, the first team. So I got some boys from Moss side here that, um, that, that want to join the team. So at the moment we are second in the league and we're looking to win it you know so yeah that that's what i'm doing every day <laughs> training <Amazing. Fantastic. laughs> still coaching 
Hey. And and working, of course, with me other stuff. You, you know, you never lose the love for the game, mate. And I I, I applaud you for that. <laughs> absolutely not. And I just keep going. And this is this is what makes me make me tick. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, guys, thank you for listening. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at Shoot the Defense. Until next time, take care.